right. And I'm going to share my screen. Right. And then we will jump right in. Yes. Yes. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it should be on your screen now. Just let me know you can see everything okay. Are we good? Can you see 2023 refresh? Yes. Okay. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today on this beautiful evening. My name is Olga St. Pierre. I am your local real estate agent and your community and real estate resource of choice. Um, I am always plugged in on figuring things out and how uh, decisions and, and updates and upgrades affect everything. So I'm happy to be with you today. I've been doing this workshop for the last oof, almost five years now with the libraries in our county network. Uh, just a little bit about me and my team. I am a full-time real estate agent and we have clients and helping have been clients move across United States and Canada for the last 14 years. Our team mission is to help anyone with a desire and a plan, helping them become homeowners. And once you become homeowners, we are there right alongside you like we are tonight and helping you translate what's going on in the industry and helping you be a responsible and sustainable homeowner. We love providing information that is yes. manageable, that makes sense, and helps everyone whether you have to be on the budget or not. So we do have a complete moving solution for those of us that choose to work with us. And uh, we also have a concierge service. So think of us as your virtual yellow pages. As you know, that yellow pages book gets smaller and smaller every year because everything hops online. And we want to be there for you with recommendations for trusted contractors. If you're looking for um, you know, things to do remodel in your know, home to make it better in your own, if you're looking for recommendations for accountants, for attorneys, Whatever it is on your plate that you have your mind to, please reach out to us and we're happy to make a recommendation of someone that we personally used or one of our clients has used and they really liked the quality of work and the pricing. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us. It is absolutely free of charge to you. We just want to be there to help you out. So that's a little bit about us. But today I want to talk about the things that you see on internet, on social media, and what I want to assure you is the ideas that you love watching on TLC, watching on HDTV, where you see those really, really swoon-worthy pictures on Instagram. And I'm here to tell you that all of these things are absolutely affordable. And yes, you can have that perfect HDTV home. So the idea is, is that I'm going to help you understand what it takes some to do how to do these some of these things on the budget when you don't have investors and you don't have um, advertisers that will provide free things for you just because they want to be on TV. Okay, so today I want to share with you some of the top renovation pro projects that are going to bring you the most return on your uh, financial investment, some inexpensive tips and tricks to help you want to stay in your home instead of going away somewhere, best places to shop that we have found for some of the really fun things for your home, the actual befores and afters, and I also want to share with you, with you some of the current trends that we're seeing because we're always tracking, we're always looking. So that's kind of like the game plan for today. And I do want to leave a few minutes after we're done for some questions and answers. If there's anything else that you maybe did not get your answer to and you want to pick my brain on, 
I am more than happy to do that. Um, and that's why we leave um, some time at the end. And uh, for uh, quite a few people that have registered online, we always ask for the questions ahead of time. So I'm going to take a look and see if there's anything in that list of questions that maybe I did not cover that we, we may want to just get some answers as well. So why I feel that it's important to be in the loop is actually for a few things. Number one, if you are eventually going to be making a move, and all of us are at some point in your life journey, it's nice to know what the buyers at that time are going to be looking for, right? And um, often or not, depending on the, the scope of your projects and the things that you may want to update in your home, because the home ages with us, right? Uh, the roof is only good for so many years. Your heating and air conditioning is only good for so many years. And it's important to understand what buyers are really looking for, what kind of pile, what kind of flooring, what colors are they looking for? So that way you can maximize how much money you get for, um, for most of us, which is our home, is the biggest investment that we have. So that's reason number one. Uh, number two, I'm also a big believer of you renovating your home, not for someone else because you're moving, but because you are still living in your home and you want to enjoy your home. Um, I think um, a lot of you will agree with me with the fact that when we moved into our home, like when I moved into the home where I'm at now in 2005, I only had one daughter, which means that I painted her room uh, pale yellow and the furniture that I bought at that time is what I liked. Well, here we are now. I have two kids and they're now in high school and my own preferences, my own colors, uh, some of my own things that I now appreciate have changed, right? Because our, as we grow and mature, we tend to appreciate different things and our choice colors may be changing as well because my daughter in high school has painted her room from now from pale yellow to a beige neutral palette because she wanted to do pops of color and some other decor in her room. And um, actually, she is choosing to go into the interior design field when she starts college in the fall. So she's going to be helping me with a lot of these things that we're talking about. So I'm excited because she grew up in, in, this, in this world. So, so some of the ideas that I'm sharing with you today are can be done on a small budget because I don't want you to think it's going to take thousands of dollars. So let's jump right in. Remodeling costs have dramatically increased in the last few years, as you can see from the graph. And, uh, you know, COVID has been a big contributor to it. So a lot of you have been asking me whether the remodeling costs are going to go down in 2023, and I don't quite see it happening. Um, a lot of the contractors that uh, we are using to help our clients do some of the remodeling because they are making the move, I am seeing some of these prices and they are biting. So I don't think the costs are going to go down I think that the supply chain where the, you know, were talking about materials like wood and some other products has been pretty uh, streamlined and um, kind of get, uh, got back on track because the production is back on track. So that is a good thing. But the cost of materials and the cost of labor has gone up. So that's one of the other things that I'm a big proponent mm -hmm. to uh, always, always advising you to take your time and to understand that if you're going to be working on a big project because it's time for you maybe to remodel your kitchen or to do some sprucing up, it's going to take you time to figure out the budget and to find a good contractor because a lot of them are busy and may not be calling you back. So I and I will share with you some tips as well. So let's just go over a couple of the trends that we're seeing right now. And I will show you some pictures as well. So natural elements are very much in right now. So think things like marble. Um, a lot of marble in the lighter colors are in if people are thinking about updating their counters. It doesn't mean that you can't update with granite because in some cases, granite is less expensive, right? Depending on your budget. But people are looking for more natural and lighter colors to brighten up and lighten up their space. So rattan, wicker, and cane are in. A lot of people are choosing to have natural palette with natural colors, but then they're choosing statement pieces that are easy to purchase because they're on the budget. So think like lamps or pillowcases or bedding or, uh, or window treatments. I've seen quite a few of that and it's very easy to do. And then you know, if you get tired of color, you don't have to repaint the wall 
what you have to do is swap out the curtains. Okay, so accent chairs, textured walls are back, arches and curves are very much in. So don't think about that as your permanent uh, arches that you're having in your home. Think like curved back sofas and chairs and round pillows and some other fun things. Colors, warm and calming blues, peach pinks and sophisticated neutrals are kind of dominating the uh, sphere right now. And I'll definitely show you some pictures. Uh, traditional layouts where you have like very much things organized and very strict are going away, which means that you can have one space occupying and meaning a couple of different things for you. It could be a living room, but it can also be a, a spot for you to have an office. Okay, minimalism, at Art Deco in mid-century, as you can see, uh, some minimalism is still in, and Art Deco in mid-century is definitely still in, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that thrift shopping has been highlighted in social media so much that it has become a very, very natural trend. Uh, physical wellness spaces are popular yeah. within the home where we're talking about, you know, uh, well care and self-care. So having a corner or a space where you yeah. can sit down and relax and maybe do some yoga, do some reading is very much in. And it's not that hard to create because you're not designating a whole room for something like that. And home offices are still desirable and popular because a lot of people are still working from home. Some kids are still at home as well. So let's actually jump in and talk about some of the easy home improvement projects that you can do over one weekend. And of course, I also have some projects to share with you that's going to take you longer, but they're still very much budget friendly. So number one, paint, paint, paint is my favorite friend for many, many things. Technology has really evolved and now you have paint products for just about everything. So let's talk about what you can do with paint. I am a big believer in choosing neutrals as your foundation, right? Think like the foundation of the house. And there's really three families. The most popular ones are going to be your family of whites. And then we also have grays and we're having a family of beiges. Um, as long as I've been teaching this workshop for the last five years, some of these timeless colors have not changed. And that should tell you something. That means that these colors are timeless. They are classic. Okay. So some of these colors, I do truly recommend for you to paint anything from walls to kitchen cabinets. Just keep in mind that when you are looking at colors, they are either going to be warm or they're going to be cool. So depending on what speaks to you and makes sense to you, you may want to play around with colors. So most of the professional painters do prefer to use Benjamin Moore or Sherwin Williams colors. And yes, they are going to be more expensive. However, the good news is because of the advances of technology, if you like any of these Benjamin Moore colors that I have here, you can take the name and the code to your neighborhood Lowe's or Home Depot store, and they will be able to match that color in their own brands, which means you're going to spend less money. So here are some colors of the year. Every year, uh, each major company puts out their choices of colors for every year. And Bear this year decided to go very neutral so that way they can appeal to a lot more people. And the color choice is called blank canvas. Okay. I think it's a, it's an interesting name to a color, but the idea for you is to take this foundation, this base, and then you can go to town with doing accents. So you can do color accent walls, you can do accent pieces, whatever speaks to you. But this color but blends in really well with the desire to have the neutral and kind of woodsy, neutral color wood, um, rattan, basket weave kind of combination of colors. So there are some other color trends for you from Benjamin Moore, from Bear and Sherwood Williams. And what they do is they take that one color that they focus on and then they add some warm and other poppy colors. And there's really no uh, logical reason for any of these. It's just, you know, there's some cooler colors, some warmer colors, some more deeper colors. And it's just a matter of what speaks to you, what makes sense to you. And it also depends on the project that you're working on, right? 
Oh. Here's Benjamin Moore's color of the year. It's very, very kind of like bright. It's called the raspberry blush. And here, what I encourage you to do, you to do is use this color as more of a pop accent. So you can do a door. I love colorful doors, and we'll talk about that in just a second. And I also love accent walls. That is something that can still help you have that beautiful color if you really, really want it. But it's not going to enclose the whole room because if you were to choose this color and paint your room that color, it's going to enclose the walls and it's going to make the room look smaller. So I wouldn't recommend using this color painting everything, but one wall or maybe painting the bookshelves or the back of the bookshelves would definitely look amazing. Here, Sherman Williams' color of the, oh, war, of, the of the of the year is called Redent Point, and I like it because it's a cooler color, but it's not quite beige. I think it has some, some purple to it. That's what my eye is drawing. But as you can see, you can use this color to paint your kitchen cabinets. <laughs> More and more, I am seeing kitchen cabinets being painted really, really in colors. It's not your regular wood or black or white. I'm seeing more and more pastel colors. I'm seeing two-tone kitchens where the top cabinets are lighter color, maybe white, and the bottom is painted something more dramatic. Or all the cabinets except for the island are one color, and the island is a popping color, right? You can use your island as an accent point in your kitchen. Also, you can see here some other pieces of furniture that are being painted in that color. And I already mentioned to you, painting the back of your bookcase. Let's say if you have built-ins in your family room or living room, this would make a great mm -hmm. accent um, color, color choice. So when we're painting, how are we going to kind of figure out what makes sense to us? So you can go the traditional route and get some color samples. You can get the containers, whether it's a pint or quart, and you arm yourself with a brush and you walk around the house. And my recommendation to you, if you're going to be trying the paint color, you have to do it in every yeah. single room of your house because depending if it's facing north or south, how much light it gets and what it looks like when it's light or dark, every room is going to look different. So definitely yeah. do that. If you don't want to actually put paint on your wall, then using these peel and stick paint samples is going to be your friend. So these peel and stick paint samples are like sticky notes. They The company will paint them any color that you want, and then they will put it in the mail to you, and then you can take them and put them on any of your wall. And again, try it out in every single room of your home. My other very much favorite a technology tool is this one. It's Sherwin Williams Visualizer. Yeah. And what I love about it is that if you don't necessarily want to oh, actually get started with colors, or maybe you have no idea which direction you want to go to, this is a virtual way for you to paint with a virtual color. So you take a picture of your home, any room in your house or exterior, or roof, or whatever whatever it is that you want to do, you upload it to the system, and then it's going to tell you, okay, what do you want to paint? And then you use your mouse, and you can paint one wall, you can try another wall, you can paint your furniture, you can paint front door, you can paint shutters. I think it's a great way for you to get your imagination juices flowing and figure out and say, well, you know, maybe I'm on the budget right now, but I really want to get my exterior spruce stuff, and I'm just going to start with the front door, but I don't know where. So try the technology first and see and play around with it. In fact, I want to, I'm one of the things that I'm I want to do by this weekend is play around with some things in my backyard and kind of get my imagination going on what I want to do. So definitely a great website. About to say, there is never a bad time to paint and refresh. Here are some basic kind of rules of thumb for you because there's all different types of paint and finishes. So depending on where you are going to be painting, just keep some of this in mind. If you are going to be painting areas that are high traffic, where you may want to grab a magic eraser, one of my most favorite tools to get rid of stains and scuff marks, then you want to use eggshell or satin finish because you can clean the wall. If you're going to be painting maybe trim or baseboard, um, then semi-gloss and gloss are going to be your friends. If you have walls that are not, uh, they're not flat, 
and you're trying to minimize that visual look, then you want a non-reflective finish, which is your flat paint. But just remember, flat paint is you can't take a magic eraser to it. So that way, if you get a scuff or you get a mark, the only way to fix it is to touch touch paint. Right. And here, I thought was just a genius way of keeping track of paint. As you can imagine, every house I go to, when I go in the basement or I go into the garage, I see stacks of paint, uh, the cans, and they're no longer good after they've been open for three months, yet they sit in the garage for years because all of us want to make sure we remember the color paint that we used. Well, here's a great way for you to be able to remember it and not have to store the paint that goes back on only a few months after it's been opened. So you write down when you painted, what kind of paint you used. You can even put a swatch down where you bought the paint and what is the number. And then you just cover that and put that back switch back on. So I just thought that was genius and I wanted to share that with you. So project number one, that's what we're starting out with. I already mentioned to you one of the easiest ways for you to dress up your exterior is to repaint the front door. However, I invite you to get really, really creative and use an amazing pop of color. Can you see this purple door right here? This is actually one of my clients that I purchased for house last year. She moved out of a community that had an HOA. And she <laughs> said, finally, Olga, I can paint them with the color of my front door, any color I want. And her favorite color is purple. And she's like, do you think I should paint my front door purple? I said, Stephanie, why not? And so she did. And she did some other um, other pops of color throughout her house. But I took a picture yeah. because I visit her quite often. And every time I come over, I look at her front door and I... Just smile because I know that it makes her happy every time she comes home as well. So I invite you to be creative and think about some of your favorite colors. And instead of doing your regular basic white and black, which is the classic colors and the things that we see more often, why not do something unique? Because every time I see a house that has a bright red door or yellow or blue, it brings a smile to my face because, it, you know, having these bright colors does something to our happy hormones and it makes us happy. So very, very easy to do. You just have to make sure that you're using exterior weather paint. You can experiment with the bright colors for fun and energy, and you can express your style with other things like hardware, lighting and flowers. OK, I can tell you that the scallops are out. Okay, The scallops have been out on this door, as well as in your kitchen. You know what I'm talking about? That, you know, the balance is above the uh, sinks. So they have been out. So I encourage you to experiment with colors and it's a lot easier for you to buy some paint and try it out versus replacing your front door because it's expensive. You know, doors are very much expensive. All right, next up, let's talk about transforming your staircase with paint, right? Do you see my kind of my hint of really using paint for different magic? Well, you can paint just about anything. And the staircase is I invite you to update it because if you have oak staircase, it's going to date your home. And there's nothing wrong because it's quality wood, yet it's it's now what we're seeing more and more is some different colors paint, whether it's white, whether it's black. Um, some people decided to, to, to remove the spindles and make them wrought iron if you want, but then just keeping uh, the rails the same. So you decide kind of what makes sense to you, but it's, you know, it's a little bit of a time consuming because you have to paint on all sides and each spindle to take care of, yet it's going to really make a difference and make your staircase pop. Well, besides staircase, you also can paint the stairs, right? If you are not a fan of carpet and more and more people get more allergic to it and they're actually removing carpets from their homes, that's some of the trends that I am seeing, you can paint the stairs. And it doesn't mean that you all have to paint it the same color, right? You can do black on top and you can do white on the sides. And I have actually seen um, like a colors, they are called ombre. So you go from like a deeper color, the same family and then you get lighter as you get to the top or you get lighter as you get to the bottom which is a really cool effect you can also paint your kitchen and vanity countertops i'm not sure if you knew that but it's one of my favorite tricks when you're on the budget or you know if you are renting and you don't have your own place you, you want to make your the space your own and spruce things up 
Your calendar has to be in good shape, yet this kit is what I found on Amazon for just for $80. And you can find this type of kit, Rust-Oleum also makes it, you can find it at Home Depot and Lowe's. And they have basic colors, yet it goes from light to dark, and depending on the color of your cabinets, you can decide on what makes sense for you, yet you can paint it, it's not hard to do, and it can definitely be done in one weekend. Painting your cabinets. I am a big proponent of helping my clients take the cabinets that they already have and painting them before spending thousands of dollars to replace them. If you think about the cabinets that were that were made back in 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s are a lot better quality than the cabinetry that is made right now. If you want to replace your cabinets now and you're looking for 100% wood cabinets is going to cost you quite a bit of dollars so i always suggest to you see what you have because you can keep the, the cabinets and let's say that your doors don't look good you can replace the doors and it's not going to be as expensive as replacing everything my rule of thumb is this if you have small kitchen and you want to brighten up your space then paint your cabinets as light color as possible, right? So think of a bigger picture, what you're trying to accomplish, whether it's great or the timeless color to paint is white. It is really my favorite. If you have a large space, then you may want to experiment with colors that go darker. You can go as dark as espresso or black, but that's only if you have a big enough kitchen that has enough light to handle it. Otherwise, dark color is going to absorb the light and it's going to make your home look very depressing and very small. So as you can see, some of these before and after pictures where this is your traditional 80s old cabinets, they're still in great shape. So what we did here is added the handles and we painted it white. We replaced the countertops and we added a really nice undermount sink and then a new faucet. Okay, here, the only thing they did was painted the medicine cabinet and also the same 1980s and 90s of vanity. And then this one got painted black because I think that uh, they were going for that black and white look. And in this picture before and after, they chose to go the route of two different colors that they really loved. So white was on top and they updated the handles, as you can see. And then they went with these really pretty kind of like sea blue color and everything else stayed the same. Right, and it really dresses up the kitchen. Uh, one thing just to keep in mind is that if you decide to paint your kitchen cabinets, you need to use the specific paint that is made for kitchen cabinets. It's more durable because we're constantly touching the cabinets and scratching them with our nails, and it's going to stick better to make sure that it with with hands uh, withstands the uh, the cooking temperature and you know the. Um, the humidity in in the room and it's durable because we're going to be constantly closing and opening the cabinets. Here's another uh, a few suggestions for you to update your kitchen. As I already mentioned to you, these valances definitely date your kitchen. So I do recommend that you remove them and you can add some pretty lighting or if you don't want to, if you have no way of doing that, then don't add anything. You can just have some nice fall wood blinds for you to add on and that's really going to modernize the space and the last tip that i have is that if your cabinets are in good shape you can really dress them up by updating your handles if you have some old ones and you really want to spruce them up on a really small budget you can just use the same the same holes that are already in your cabinets and then you can just add them on and then it's easy to replace when you get tired of them again here's a great way for you to do some adjustments without actually spending a lot of money. I already mentioned to you, here's what I want to show you, like in this picture, one way for you to spruce up your room is doing accent colors. Remember, I already mentioned to you that you can use the lamps. Look at this pretty turquoise color. So in here, the interior designer used turquoise to dress up this room of neutrals with a painting, the bedding, and the lamps. And when you get tired of that turquoise color, it's very easy to replace, right? So the next tip is adjusting your curtain rods. 
I'm not sure who said that it's a rule of thumb for you to frame your window, but what it does visually, it actually makes the room look smaller because you're literally framing the window. If you look at the catalogs or look at some of the interior design uh, website, you will see that a lot of the times when they hang those curtains, they go as high as possible and they hang them almost to the ceiling. You see that? So the rule of thumb is for you to try and go as high as you can, or at least 10 inches from the window and you go 13 inches away from your window and that's where you put your rod so this is the rule of thumb for you to kind of try and see what you can do with your space but it's a great way for you to create more visual space without actually having to spend any money so give it a try and see if this is something that you can do in one of your rooms here we go i am still on paint everybody Okay, I'm telling you, your paint is your definitely your, your team member. So now because there's so much different paint, I encourage you to think about what else that you can update in your room. So think your fixtures, your paper towel and toilet paper holder, your lights, your lamps, your ceiling fans, your registers. All of these things can be painted if you are trying to update and do a little bit of modernization. This is where Rust-Oleum Universal is your friend. It's a paint and primer in one. And, you know, it's it's interesting that last year, my husband painted our lawn furniture. So it was starting to rust. It was black with glass. And he used the Rust-Oleum to paint our furniture black. Now, one thing that you need to be prepared is you need to have patience to do this because it's going to take some time because you're spray painting. But I, when he was done and it was dry, our furniture looked brand new and it still is like it was amazing so i'm a big proponent of rust-oleum products that we use for different uh, for all different kinds of projects so here's something that i mentioned to you is updating your ceiling fan without replacing it you can paint your ceiling fan like if you have some of these gold features you can spray paint it by preparing everything and spray painting the metal part <clears throat> so let's dive in into some other projects <clears throat> that you could make if you don't have an entryware where you can sit on the bench and help yourself let's say put your shoes on or tie your shoes <clears throat> um, you can create a entry nook from a closet so it's just another way for you to look at the space that you currently have and say, you know what, how is that space going to work better for me for my needs? So I just thought this was just a unique way of turning a closet into something that is just, just more than storing coats and your vacuum cleaner, as an example. We have post storing furniture. I don't know if, if any of you have done it before. I'm a big fan, especially I did that, especially after I moved into um, our first home with my husband after the college. We had no money and we had very little furniture and um, his neighbors from his parents' house were selling their house and they said, well, just go into a house and take whatever you want. And we did. And the first thing we took was a nice dining room set. Well, the cushions were kind of dingy looking. So my mom and I went to a Joanne's style store. We got we bought some very pretty uh, fabric. And then we just reupholstered uh, all of the cushions. And it was very easy to do. And uh, we've had that furniture piece for a long time before we moved on to something else. So it's just something that is an uh, easy project to do. Uh, it's inexpensive and if you have a treasure piece of furniture that you really want to keep in your family yet you want to update it with time and maybe your own uh, color choices it's a great way for you to do that all right peel and stick things um, a really great uh, a friend especially if, if you do not have a budget to hire someone to actually lay tile you can find these really fun patterns if you want or if you want to do classic this is one of the most uh, often asked questions that I get in terms of 
Um, what what can I do in terms of, uh, of a backsplash, whether it's in the kitchen or a bathroom? And I can tell you it's subway tile is the way to go. Whether you're doing something small, which is a brick size, or you're doing something uh, bigger, which is what I see right now in bathrooms, on walls and the floor, it's entirely up to you and it's your choice. So you can find these uh, peeling sticks. I've seen it in Joann's. I've seen it at Walmart. And they're definitely there in Home Depot and Lowe's. Easy to use, you just have to clean the wall, you trace your outlines, measure and cut, peel and stick, align, and then you put it together and make sure that it's secure on the wall. So it's very easy, it's quick, and it's something you can definitely do yourself. You can also do the same thing on the floor. I've seen these tiles on the floors. If you're going for that black and white or black and blue look, I love these tiles. You can put them right on top of your tile or any kind of flooring that you have. You just have to clean it and follow the instructions. And all you really need is a really good like box cutter to help you cut those tiles around all of the corners and then around the toilet. So, so that's my one of my favorites. And of course, if you have some of these really fun pastel colors bathrooms and you're thinking that it's time for me to update them then instead of ripping out and completely gutting your bathroom reglazing refinishing your tub or tile is a great way to do that so rustoleum does make a product that's called tub and tile refinishing kit and it's not just plain uh, paint it's actually a epoxy type of color it's not easy to do you have to make sure that you, your space is very well ventilated and if you don't feel comfortable that's where i would suggest that you hire a professional however reglazing a tub is a lot less expensive than going the route of completely gutting your bathroom which can cost you thousands of dollars here are some other suggestions that i have for you on how you can spruce up your bathroom on the budget you can definitely replace the handles your faucet in your light fixtures. Very easy to do and it's going to make a huge difference. I'm also a big proponent of using uh, different spaces in your bathrooms, especially if they're small, like these hanging shelves where you can put a nice stand with shelves. And don't forget, you can use the back of your door to hang your towels, let's say if you have a small guest bathroom. And I'm also a pro big proponent of utilizing all the space that you have including handing you know investing in some of these hanging products that you can put on the doors of your vanity cabinets where you get access to all the things that you use every day and you don't have to kind of scooch down and find these things somewhere kind of like in the deep hollow of your vanity cabinet barn style doors I just want to share with you that these are lifesavers in many cases where you don't have a lot of space because really all you need is something that you can use as a door and the hardware. I've seen people get really creative with some of the things that they can actually make the door out of. And I'm a big fan of using these barn doors as your pops of color. Look at this beautiful color in the dining room. I really love it. So barn door is a great way for you to update your uh, just about any space. It's going to make it more modern for sure. Garage. <laughs> so I have some really fun ideas here for you. If your garage doors don't have any anything on them, you can buy these magnets that are sold on Amazon and you can add windows, handles, and hinges to them. These are magnets, everybody. You don't have to drill anything. You just have to kind of slap them on. And because most garage doors are metal, just about any magnets is going to work. So I just thought it was a great way for you to spruce up your doors if you're looking to do some exterior quick and easy modernization. And of course, don't forget if there's a way for you to kind of clean up your, if you have a garage space, um, you can use easy tips to help you and, and spruce up your garage floor with some of these tips that I have here for you and using again, specific uh, paint that is made for garage floors. So where to buy and look for your ideas. So <laughs> it's you can go down this rabbit hole and you're going to stay there for a long time if you're looking for ideas as you can imagine. Where to buy, here is a list of my favorite places. Home Depot and Lowe's, I already mentioned to you, floor decor. 
we have a couple of stores. If you are in PA, one is in Langhorn, and then one is in Morristown, New Jersey, which is in Burlington County. I love these stores because they have a lot of products on hand and most of them are in stock. So you can go take a piece of flooring and then take it into and, and compare it to some stonework or maybe countertop or something else and you can match them. So there's lots of choices and that's they have a lot more choices than Home Depot and Lowe's. Wayfair.com online has tons of options. A lot of the times it's free shipping and they have lots of different colors as well. Lamps Plus Open Box, I found some great options there for lighting. And of course, Overstock, Amazon, and eBay for some additional shopping ideas as well. And if you are looking to get your imagination going and you're just not sure where to start, one of my favorite websites is called house.com, H-O-U-Z-Z. Uh, and you can head over there and do some searching based on maybe the room that you want to do, or if you are thinking about maybe doing built-in shelves or a fireplace, you can search by a specific project or a specific room in your house. So that's a great place. All right, uh, we, we talked a little bit about hiring contractors and um, that's what I mentioned to you, that if you're going to be embarking on some of these projects, please allow as much time as possible. It's not going to happen right away, especially if you're looking to hire a quality contractor. Best time to hire contractors is late fall and winter. That's when they are slower and you're going to be able to catch them better. Don't be surprised if you're calling contractors now and they're not going to return your phone calls. They're busy, they're working on projects and they're not, they don't need to call you right now. And that's unfortunate. How do we find them? So I'm a big proponent of asking for recommendations from people that I know and trust. So you can go on social media and um, ask in your local Facebook group, hey, has anyone used, I'm looking for a painter, I'm looking for a tile person, I'm looking for a plumber, electrician, and they will give you some recommendations. And then what I suggest is that you Google these people and see what kind of ratings they have, if any. Definitely look for ask for recommendations from friends and family and definitely reach out to us. That is why we keep our concierge list is to help you with a lot of these projects. And also, you can check out websites like Thumbtack and Angie's List for suggestions as well. I recommend that you obtain at least three quotes. This way you can see if the prices really fluctuate or they're pretty much the same along the border, which will give you an idea that you are right on the right track. And I always suggest that you verify your contractor's license on your state's website, depending on where you are. Um, you can just Google uh, contractor license search and your state. And I included here uh, information for Pennsylvania and New Jersey. You definitely want to make sure that your contractor that you're planning on hiring is actively licensed and they're actively insured for the work that they're going to be doing. And just a reminder that the prices are up. They are biting, so don't be surprised on the on some of the quotes that you're going to receive and the delivery times are high. I know some contractors are now booked six months ahead. So if you're really looking for a good contractor to help you get your work done, make plans on doing, some, on doing something probably this coming winter, even though we are in the early spring season right now. So that is what I wanted to share with you today. I hope that I got your juices flowing and gave you some really good ideas and kind of thoughts for you that, to occupy you so that way you can get busy this weekend. We host at least once workshop, one workshop a week. Most of them are now on Zoom. Sometimes we do go into the library, but you can join us from the comfort of your couch or your desk. And all of our workshops are listed right here on Live with Olga. And... All of our workshops, once they get recorded, are going to be put on our At Home with Olga channel. Uh, you're welcome to go in there and look at the past recordings or the recording of this workshop. And as always, once you're starting your work, please send us and share with us your before and after projects of pictures of your projects because we do love to see them. And yes, part of our community service is we're happy to help you with your own projects. So if you want to talk to me in private and kind of pick my brain on what makes sense for you on the journey that you are embarking in your own home, please let me know. I'm happy to talk to you on the phone. I'm happy to talk to you on Zoom 
Or if you want me to pop in, I could do that too. I answer my phone. The information that I share here with you is me. It's my personal cell phone. And I'm always available to you via phone call, text message, or email. And if you want to connect with me on social media, most of the time I'm hanging out on Facebook. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Um, I'm, I hope that you, you enjoyed some of these suggestions. And now I wanted to just check with you and see if anybody has any questions. Uh, Suzanne, if you are listening, if you can message me on chat, I don't have your contact information to send you a copy of the recording of this workshop as well as the workbook. So if you can do that so I can get you that information, that would be great. Anybody has anything to add or any questions or feedback? I hope that you found this helpful. I have a question. Mm -hmm. I have been looking for a coffee table. And when I go into the stores for brand new pieces, I'm finding they're cheaply made. Mm -hmm. So I've been looking at thrift stores to find good quality that may be banged up and I ha could have someone refinish it because I do know a refinisher. I've had him do several pieces for me already. Any suggestions on where to go? I mean, I've gone to Restore, which is over on Route 1 in Langhorn. Mm -hmm. I went up to a thrift store in Hatboro. Uh, there's another one up in Fairless Hills. Great stuff. On Route 1. Yeah, great stuff. Mm -hmm. any, any others that you can think of? Yes, I am a big supporter of thrift stores because I find that all the products are much better made. And mm -hmm. if you take some time and refinish them and restore them to their glory, they're amazing. Uh, what I also recommend is you uh, look and go to some estate sales. How do you find estate sales? Yeah, hold on. Let me see. I have a website for that. Let me tell you what it is. Yep, that's the one I want to, I'm going to share this one with you. Actually, you know what? Let me see. Can you see my screen? I see you. Oh, okay. All right. Hang on. Let me share because then I can show you. Here we go. All right. Let me know. You can see my screen, right? Yes. It's coming. Can you see it already? I can. All right. Awesome. So this is the website. It's called estatesales.net. And my daughter and I frequent it quite often. And we search, you can search by your area. So let's say we're going to search Langhorn PA. And then you just narrow it down, right? Depending on how many days and when mm -hmm. you want to go. And it goes through, you can see people advertise their state sales, their moving sales, online sales, all of them are here. And then what you can do is, let's say here's one, Hamilton Square, right? So it's not far, it's on the New Jersey side and it's a state sale. And what you can do is it's going to tell you the days that they're holding. And a lot of times they will share pictures. So there's no pictures here, but in many cases they will and then you can kind of get an idea on what's being sold and i can tell you that i found some really great products there like dressers and other things look there's 1300 pictures here All right so Bryn Mawr is probably going to be on the pricier side because that's um you know main line but right. if you start scrolling through kind of like every weekend typically estate sales are held on friday saturday and sunday they always start on the friday and that's the first day to go. So first and second day are going to be regular prices. And quite often on the third day, they do everything half price. So I found sometimes estate sales and moving sales are better than uh, sometimes the things that you find in thrift stores. So here's one that is in New Jersey, but you can see they have pictures of the things that they're going to be selling. Mm -hmm. So if there's anything that appeals to you, you know, you can actually go there and say, okay, I'm looking for this particular piece. 
So I think I think that might be something that you 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 will find appealing. But yes, and you know, of course, you. it might take you a, a few tries to find something. But this is a great way of finding something that's good quality if it's older, for sure. Right. Right. Thank you. Of course. I actually found a great dining room table that is an older Ikea version because I was looking for something that's lighter color oak and it's solid wood, solid wood chairs and solid wood table that I bought off of someone that was moving and uh, we're using it right now. But my goal is to drag it out this summer and to take off the all the varnish on the top completely to bare wood and then just put a clear coat on because I just want the color of wood. So that's that's what we're going to be working on this summer. Oh, OK. Suzanne said second chance thrift store in Woodbury, the Arc thrift store in Burlington, both benefit handicapped people. Awesome. I have heard of ARC, but Second Chance Thrift Store in Woodbury is another one that I can add to my list. Thank you very where much. Was, and where was the ARC food thrift store? ARC thrift store in Burlington. Burlington. Yes. Burlington. Yeah, Thank New, you. New Jersey side. Yeah. And honestly, you know, because of the work that I do, I do work with a lot of estates as well. So um, it, my mission is not to throw anything away. So I always ask the family, can we donate things? Can you know if you want if you don't want to sell stuff, can I have a veterans thrift store come and get some things? So it's um, I want to make sure that more people benefit from things like that. And that's when the family will do or like we'll help them host the estate sale. So I think the state sales might be a way to go for you, Pat, to find mm -hmm. some of those little unicorns that you like and then finish it to your liking. All right. Um, Suzanne, thank you. I got your email. No worries. You're going to get a recording, so you'll be able to hear everything as well as get a, get a, uh, a, a, uh, a workbook as well. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> All right. Anything else you could think of? All right. Well, if nothing else, I think we're going to wrap up for tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. We hope to Thank see you. you again on another workshop. We have tons of different topics that are coming up. Bye. Check out our upcoming schedule. We're going to send it to you in the email, most likely tomorrow, along with the workbook, along with a copy with a copy of this recording. And if you have any other questions, just re reply back to me. Give me a call or text me because I'm always around. This is what I do full time. So I'm always happy to help. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Olga. All right, absolutely. Thank you so much, ladies. It's a, have a great we weekend, uh, the rest of the week, and have a great evening. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure.